Charlie. Two in a row right there. And Coach Roberts has seen enough of this. And she calls for a timeout. 7.32 left to go in the second quarter. We'll keep it right here. And Austin P has suddenly had a point explosion. Yes, 31-15. Outscoring the Colonels 12-3 to open play here in the second quarter. As we were talking about, the uh, leading scorers to take a look at from our first quarter, uh, Samantha Norton, actually she was two for two with five points. And on the other side for Eastern Kentucky, we had Michaela Hunter who was two for three on total field goals. Uh, she had five points as well, so. Yeah, some usual names for Austin P, especially Sydney Gooch with the lead, was your leading score, six points, and then as you mentioned, Norton, and also Madison Rich with Fine Beach, and Kiera Banks with three. Yasha Gray held scoreless. By the way, speaking of Yasha Gray, she is now a member of the 1500 Point Club here at Austin P. She scored 27 in the loss last week in Johnson City. But her 27 points put her in the 1500 point club, and she now has, well, I have it in front of me a moment ago. Uh, I know coming into today's game, she's 28 short of moving into fourth place all time. And well, with her bucket a moment ago, that now puts her 26 short of moving into fourth place. Offensively, she is a outstanding player, but let's not forget about her uh, skills that she's, a, or a milestone she's accomplished on the defensive side of the ball. She's currently first with uh, most APSU career steals with 263. Murray driving inside against Gooch, puts it up. And it's no good, rebound from Gooch, gives it to Gray. And Josh Gray with her second bucket of the game. Siasha with that ISO slides right past Alexis Cooper for that easy layup. Austin P now with an 18 point lead. And all this without the services of two of their regular players, Brianna Alexander and Shelby Olszewski, if you're just joining us, are not are not in the lineup today. They're not even dressed for today's game. And also J.C. Scott and Jennifer Wachocha continue to be out. They haven't played the all year. Control. Scooped up by Murray, who takes the other way and misses the layup. Big rebound by Sydney Goose. Just open down court with a foul. Number two, Michaela Hunter. As she flies over Madison Rich in an attempt for that block. First foul on Hunter, and that happened right in front of us. And I think, I think Madison felt her coming. She was about to put it up and then kind of tucked her head, and she knew she was possibly going to get hit, and she actually did. I saw Hunter's foot. Baker's three-point attempt right there is no good. Colonel try to move the ball around, dish across the court. The three is often marked by Abby Wright, who is now entering the game. Another rebound for Sydney Gooch. Josh scanning the floor for something open. Gooch down low in the paint. Kicks back out to Rich. Three is no good. Ball goes out of bounds. We're going to have substitutions. Katie Pippen making her first appearance in the game for the Colonels. And checking back in for the Lady Govs, number 22, Keisha Gregory. All right, Charlie, a little bit off the topic of basketball, but what, what, are you, what is your opinion or your stance on these calf sleeves that we're seeing lots of basketball players wearing nowadays? In all honesty, I know precious little about them. I know they are there as the ball goes out of bounds, and Austin P will take over. They look odd, but I think it's more of a trending thing because of maybe the NBA and WNBA players starting to wear them? I guess. I, can't, I, I don't know if there's any compelling reason for it. I'm not a... I'm not a basketball player, I'm not an athlete, I'm just an athletic supporter, but um, as I see it, I don't see any compelling reason for them, but again, someone out there who actually does play, Alexis Cooper, 
picks up her first foul. That's the second this quarter on Eastern Kentucky. So I guess my opinion is that I really don't have one other than I don't really understand the purpose of it. Keisha Gregory inbounds to Goosh. Goosh's jumper is good. That's eight points now for Sydney Goosh, her first bucket of the second quarter. And Austin P, as we approach the halfway point of the second quarter, has a 20-point lead. Said it himself, folks, Charlie, it is 35 to 15 with 508 left in the second quarter. Hunter's pull-up jumper is a little too strong. Huge with the rebound. Dish down court. Madison Ridge looking for something open. Spin move. And it's good. That's good. That's 13 points now for Madison Rich. And the lead is now 22, 37-15. That three-point attempt by Pippen is off the mark. I tell you what, Gooch is racking up the rebounds down there below. He certainly has, and Madison Rich is racking up the points. Down she now has 15, and the lead is 24. How many rebounds does Sidney Gooch have? Wow, that's that'd be right. Sidney Gooch with six total rebounds. That's about what I was thinking. Yeah. Abby Wright with her first bucket of the game. It's a three. That was a long one. That ends the scoring drought for Eastern Kentucky. Kentucky. Crossover right, then back to the left for Tiasha Gray. Nice Gray. little jumper. Gray with six now. Wright attempts another long three-pointer. This time it's a little bit short. It appears as if the Colonels may be getting a little bit desperate with threes like that. With the lead like 41 to 18, what do you expect? And we now have substitutions. Samantha Norton checks back into the game for Austin P. Sydney Gooch will have a seat, and Tara Banks is back in for Austin P. Baker starting to bring the ball back up. Here are Banks off the glass, it's good. Banks is dominating down there in the paint. Nine points now for Sierra. Shot by number 24. And that is good, Miranda Maples. Miranda Maples. Her first three of the game, her first bucket of the game. Jumper. Missed all of that. Samantha Norton, though, with the rebound. Put she back. It's just a little short. Rebound, passes it back. Norton with the shot. No good. A little too strong there. We've got three on two coming down. It's like the Keisha foul Gregory. Right. Keisha Gregory, yes. No, they call Samantha Norton. Ooh. That's her second foul of the game. There were Three on two down there is a little hard to tell from our end. But that was said Abby Wright. To the line, she was perfect coming in to today's action. And that is her first miss of the season. So she's now eight of nine from the line. Here comes her second attempt. And it is good. She now has four points in the game. And the lead is 21. Baker looking for something open, and that one gets away from Norton. As possession switches, Colonels are taking it back down the other way. Massimo brings it up court. Very working on her. Right again with a three from the right wing. It's off the mark. And Samantha Morton and Miranda Maples get tangled underneath the basket. It looks like it's going on Maples. It's like Norton hit the ground pretty hard. They do get Maples. That's her second foul of the game. Here comes Baker bringing it up court. I'm a little confused as to why we don't have Tiasha bringing it down still. 
Becker wanting the ball on the right wing. Shot out of three. Massengill arrived too quickly for her to attempt it. Here comes Keisha Gregory, dishes it down low to Tierra Banks. She puts it up a little too strong, gets her own rebound. That won't fall, but she draws the foul. Abby Wright called for the foul. That's her first. And that is now four fouls this quarter on Eastern Kentucky. Next foul that will put Austin P into the bonus. Here Banks shooting 67% from the line so far this season. Puts it up and it rolls out. Jasmine Henshaw enters the game. Six foot senior out of Titusville, Florida. Hasn't seen much action this year. As Banks' second attempt is good. She now has 10 points in the game. We have a whistle. I'm not sure what happened. My head was down as I was marking my scorecard. And of course, as it always works out, whenever you have your head down marking your scorecard, something important happens. Evidently, it wasn't that important because action has resumed. Stolen by Baker. And yeah, Wright was trying to knock it. Knock it out of bounds off her foot, and Baker actually caught the ricochet. That ah. great shot is blocked by Pippen. And she was double teamed briefly, but she breaks free of it. Pippen thought about a three and changed her mind. Massengill, though, does take a three. Long rebound pulled down by Fallon Baker. And it looks like she draws, she's going to draw a foul, she does. That's a foul on number 44, Abby Wright. That's right, second foul. And that puts Austin P in the bonus. And Fallon and Baker will be at the line to shoot two. Sophomore from Portland, Tennessee, puts it up and in. That is her first bucket of the game. From Beach High School, and today's game. This is only her sixth, and now will be her seventh appearance at the line. And she's now six of seven from the line on the season. Doesn't get there very often, but she makes the most of that opportunity with two. And the lead is 24 as we approach the one minute mark of the first half. Big steal by Sydney Gooch. She's had a terrific first half. On the left side to Baker. Gooch looking for Gregory. Shot clock's under 10, they better hurry. Gray working on Cooper, trying to get it inside. No good. Rebound pulled down by Z. Willis, who has recently entered the game. About a five second differential between the shot clock and the game clock. Ball stolen away briefly by Gray, and it's stolen, taken back by Cooper. Tiasha, though, on that play. And that ball is stolen, just intercepted right in the middle by Sydney Gooch. She continues her great first half. Great dishes to the ball to the foul of Baker on the fly, puts it up and in. It's good, and she draws the foul. Mariah Massengill called for the foul. She was two for two last time she made it to the free throw line. Let's see if she can make that happen once more. She does. She ends the half with five points. And Austin Pete ends the first half with 49 total points. Austin Pete looks to come out, shake off what happened in the first half of the season and get conference play off to a great start. And they got in the first half of conference play off to a terrific start. We'll see what happens in the second. We're at halftime here at the Dunn Center. 
We'll take a quick timeout and come back and discuss what happened in the first half. Your score, Austin P49, Eastern Kentucky 22. This is the OBC Digital Network. The experienced plumbers at Benjamin Franklin Plumbing are flexible, but not that flexible. That's Leroy. Actually, he's a seasoned professional, and this is his apprentice, Richie, or part of him anyway. Richie's learning his trade in the only place that really matters, on the job. Leroy, how's he doing? He's a natural. How you doing? Limber. <laughs> Dependability starts with experience. When you call Benjamin Franklin Plumbing, you get both. You guys got room for one more down there? Nope. No. Had to ask. Wherever, whenever, cheering for whoever, there's one place to go for free OBC sports, the OBC Digital Network. John's a service tech with one hour, and he pretty much lives on the road. That is true. Reason he's so busy is because people's heating and air conditioning systems fail every single day. That is true. But it's also true that before those systems fail, they become less efficient. That costs people money. People hate that. So they call one hour for an upgrade. That is true. And that's why John's so busy. For maintenance and replacement programs, call one hour. John has just agreed to let me drive for the rest of the day. That is not true. Had to ask. Communication is key when trying to get your team to perform at its best. Your company communications, including invoices, statements, letters, and direct marketing, show your clients and prospects who you are. Partner with DNI Corp. for these critical communication efforts. From concept to completion, look to DNI for your direct mail fulfillment and billing collections processes. Call us today at 615-313-7000 or learn more about us at dnicorp.com. The best part about being a member of a Touchstone Energy Cooperative is that it's your Touchstone Energy Cooperative. Learn more about the power of your co-op membership at TogetherWeSave.com. Brought to you by Cumberland Electric Membership Corporation, your Touchstone Energy Cooperative. Today's game is brought to you by Cumberland Bank & Trust. Cumberland Bank & Trust is a true community bank. The main office and all branches are located in Clarksville and Montgomery County. Cumberland Bank & Trust works hard to provide their customers with the highest level of customer service available. Anytime you walk through their doors, you'll be greeted with a friendly smile. Stop in at any of the five convenient locations or visit online at bank at cbt.com. Cumberland Bank & Trust, member FDIC and equal housing lender. 49 to 22, our score at halftime as Austin P on the heels of a dominant performance in the second quarter, outscoring Eastern Kentucky 30 to 10, now has a 27 point lead at halftime. Cameron, they want to get off to a good start, as I mentioned before we went to break. What do you think? I mean, I'd say they did it. 49 22 going in at the half. I mean, I don't know that you could ask for much better. And as we were mentioning, their defense kind of dwindles down in the final quarters. I think with a, with a lead like this, uh, this is great. This is exactly what you want. It's 49 to 22. Absolutely. This is exactly what Austin P needed. And, and one thing about it, for Austin P, you're not relying on Tiasha Gray. She had. That, that was a little odd. Bringing the ball up by Baker, that was a little different, switching mm -hmm. it up a bit. But Yeah, she only had six points, and all six of those came in the second quarter. The leading score. For Austin P has been Madison Rich. She has 15 points. She has uh, three two-pointers and three three-pointers to lead all scorers with 15. Sydney Gooch, who's had a terrific first half. She has eight points and what six rebounds, seven rebounds. I think I think she may have pulled down one a moment ago. So Austin P showing. Let's not forget about you know one of our players to watch, Tierra down in the paint, just absolutely dominating, making it happen down there. Tierra Banks with 10 points. She and Madison Rich. Are the only ones are the only ones who are scoring in double digits. Meanwhile, for meanwhile for Eastern Kentucky, nobody is in double digits. And what do you think uh, Coach Roberts is telling her team right now at halftime? 
I think they definitely need to work on maybe even stopping Austin P a little bit. They need to be telling what Austin P's coaches have been preaching to Austin P this whole season. Just their defense needs to pick up the pace, I think, a little bit more if they hope to last any chance in this game with Austin P. 49 to 22, we'll come back with some halftime stats and highlights right after this. Since 1978, CNS Auto Repair has provided quality repair and maintenance services for the area. Now in their new facility, Doyle and his trained automotive technicians are doing more to be your source for all things automotive. With state-of-the-art equipment and continual technician training, they provide a great alternative to the dealer without sacrificing on quality and even offer a two-year, 24,000-mile warranty on most repairs. Visit their new location on Wilma Rudolph Boulevard or give them a call at 931-552-2575. Ten seconds to go. Piper coming forward. Moves in top of the key. Six seconds to go. The three. A healthy smile is a powerful thing. It deserves Delta Dental, the nation's leading dental benefits provider. We make it easy to protect your smile and keep it healthy. You don't want to simply be another face in the crowd. You want to excel, to make the most of your time on this planet. That means a decision must be made. You have to find a place where you can shine. A community that fosters your potential. A home where you can write your own future. It's time to become the person you've dreamed of being. It's time to become a governor at Austin P. If you think about it, the plumbing system in your house is really not so different than the plumbing system in your body. Over time, they both become less reliable. Nobody knows that better than the experts at Benjamin Franklin Plumbing. Hey, Chris, how's the uh, patient? Bottom's rusted out. Point is, if you don't take care of your plumbing, your plumbing will let you down. This one's leaking. That is embarrassing. For maintenance and replacement programs, call Benjamin Franklin Plumbing. Hey Mike, do you smell gas? Gas? No, not me. Wherever, whenever, cheering for whoever. There's one place to go for free OBC sports. The OBC Digital Network. OBC, 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 49-22, our score at halftime. Austin P on top of Eastern Kentucky. My name's Charlie Pat, alongside Cameron Clark. And let's go ahead and take a look at some highlights from the first half. I see Samantha, Samantha Norton dishing it underneath to Tierra Banks. And Sydney Goose is one of her eight first half points. Tremendous first half. She's having an absolutely outstanding first half. Yes. Tiasha, it seems like every highlight from her is going to be something spectacular, even if it is only six points in the first half. Well, I think that's a good thing for Austin P to show that they don't necessarily have to, because for, for most, most games, and this was the case last year, Austin P goes as Tiasha goes. And if she's having an off night, a lot of times they're in trouble. And so you think this is probably a, probably a good thing that uh, Absolutely. Baker is starting to pull up the ball. Madison Rich has a hot hand, and Sydney Gooch is having a great first half, as we keep mentioning. And uh, here are the stats at halftime. Eastern Kentucky only shooting 7 of 32 from the field. Meanwhile, Austin P, 20 of 35. As far as three-pointers go, I mean, even just all the way down the board, EKU, I mean, just 31% on three-pointers. Well, you know, Austin P not much better, but four for 11, and it's working for him. And another big advantage that Austin P right now has right now is on the glass. 
out rebounding Eastern Kentucky 25 to 16. I think that's been that's been huge for us. It's given them a lot of second chance second chance putbacks is being able to grab the offensive rebounds and really grab rebounds on both ends of both ends. Let's take a look sort of at the sort of at the bottom of this list. Assists, passing the ball is really helping Austin be out a lot. I mean, 14 different assists with EKU only having four. So, I mean, just assisting, passing the ball is definitely going to free up a lot more opportunities for Austin P, and it's going to continue to do so, hopefully. And blocks Austin P on top of that, three to one. And Eastern Kentucky trails Austin P. Well, they're ahead, but it's a bad stat. So, turnovers, they lead Austin P eight to five. Really, Austin P has just been a dominant first half. What do you look, what do you look, what do you expect to see in the second half, Cam? Just a little bit more of everything we've kind of already seen. I mean, we talked about Sydney Gooch having a great first uh, half. Uh, we'll see more rebounding from her, hopefully. Uh, lots of more touches on the ball for Tierra Banks in the paint. Uh, she's, uh, she's destroying down there. So, I mean, that's really all to look for. We're going to see if fatigue comes into, comes into play during the second half. We'll take our last time out. We'll come back. We'll have tip-off of the second half. You're watching the OBC Digital Network. DNI Corp. is the ideal solution for any company that wants to save postage dollars while improving the delivery of your mail. Since 1984, DNI has been a leader in the mailing industry, and with cutting edge technology, we continue to lead the way, providing you with large postal discounts and quick service. Call today at 615 313 7000 or visit us on the web at dnicorp.com. That's Sean. He's a real life technician with one hour, and today he's got his work cut out for him. How's it look up there, Sean? Ooh, Sean says it's a complicated mess, but fortunately, he's prepared, has all the tools he needs to get the job done right the first time. Why is that so important, Sean? Sean says being prepared is important because it saves the customer money. Kind of obvious. How long do you think this is going to take? Not long. <laughs> Impressive. If you want to fix right the first time, call one hour. Where did he go? The cost of everything has gone up dramatically over the last 75 years. With one exception, keeping electricity affordable. That's the power of your co-op membership. Learn more at TogetherWeSave.com. Brought to you by Cumberland Electric Membership Corporation, your touchstone energy cooperative. Cumberland Bank & Trust offers a variety of convenient e-banking services to help you access and manage your accounts. With free online banking, bill payment, and mobile banking, you can check out account balances, transfer funds, make loan payments, and pay bills anywhere, anytime. Visit Cumberland Bank & Trust today at bankatcbt.com. Oh, and if you have a problem, give them a call and they'll be glad to help. You'll always get a real person on the phone. Cumberland Bank & Trust. Member FDIC and Equal Housing Lender. Since 1978, CNS Auto Repair has provided quality repair and maintenance services for the area. Now in their new facility, Doyle and his trained automotive technicians are doing more to be your source for all things automotive. With state-of-the-art equipment and continual technician training, they provide a great alternative to the dealer without sacrificing on quality and even offer a two-year, 24,000-mile warranty on most repairs. Visit their new location on Lomar Rudolph Boulevard or give them a call at 931-552-2575. <laughs> Ten seconds to go. Piper <laughs> coming forward. Moves in top of the key. Six seconds to go. The three. Just less than a minute away from tipping off the second half. Playing us on top of the Cardinals of Eastern Kentucky, 49 to 22. And what is without a doubt been their most dominating performance so far this season. And as I mentioned as we headed to break a moment ago, and we've talked about it a couple of times in the first half. 
it's going to be the fatigue factor. And actually, as I was about to mention the fatigue, I suddenly, it suddenly dawned, like, doesn't seem, I don't know if we've gotten used to it, yeah. or if somebody went and invested in the thermostat, it doesn't seem like it's as hot as it was in here a little while ago. Is it just me, or does it not seem? It seems that way to me as well. I mean, it could be uh, more people arriving from maybe the next game. Uh, doors constantly being open and closed. People breathe from outside again. But in, but uh, it does feel a lot cooler. It's not easy. It does. So that may not be as big of a factor as we thought.